and welcome uh, Father Cletus Udo. Father is the vocation promoter of St. Patrick's Missionaries. Uh, and I'm very blessed to have him around here today because I was not very sure of the video. Father has taken upon himself to also be a student. Again, in this as the representative of uh, the Technical Education Board. Uh, As we gather for this, Mr. John and also Mr. Hannah, they come home at school. For those who can go to the university, we could pick up engineering, either mechanical, either metal, or we can go in for the electrical, electronic. All these are to build capacity and make us better people. Apart from that, also, they have intervened in a number of our programs and we are delighted to have them today. They promise when they come to Nigeria this time, they will organize this uh, symposium so that they will create awareness more and more. Since last year when they left, we've been able to train a total of uh, 65 students on record and certificate given to them in metal works and in aspect of engineering. Please put your hands together for them. And so some of those who received the training last year are here with us, and some others are not here yet. We are thankful that today it's not going to be Father Dominic speaking to all of you. It's going to be Mr. We and the others speaking to you. I will only introduce them briefly and then I will step aside. But it's good I let you know a little about HIFA. HIFA is a non-governmental organization that started in Austria many years back and the essence of beginning this uh, organization was to help intervene in the life of young people, make life worth living and create situation where the children can be assisted in their education and also trained so that they will become productive people and will use the youthful energy to produce rather than using it for restiveness and causing of problems. And so their work has been in the past years to supply scholarship to students who are indigent, do not have parents or may have parents but who are not buoyant to send them to school. Also, they go on training people, setting up workshops. In Nigeria, they have a number of workshops across the country. We have a center in Iko de Pene, Akwaibom State, where we have wood work and wood technology. And we have a place presently in Okigwe Diocese, Imo State, and close to Owere, where they also train in aspects of mechanics. We have other centers in Lagos, in Aba. In Aba we have uh, a center there still run by, uh, in collaboration with them, where we have the hospital and then the training in the hospital uh, or medicals. We have places in Lagos and other distant parts. But we are blessed to have this center in Calabar and within one of our very pronounced college, St. Patrick's College. And so it is an opportunity on this day to welcome all of you, welcome them again, and leave the floor for them to continue with this training. At this point, I wish to very humbly invite Professor Uwe to speak to us. He will let us know a little more about HIFA and the, the ideology behind it, their philosophy, the workings, and why they choose to intervene in the life of young people and more so in Nigeria. He will also tell you how far they have gone with those they have trained. And some of them are already here and we are particularly happy that you two are now part of the training program. Thank you for turning up. And put your hands together for Professor Owe. Yes. 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 Yes.
It says Hilfe für alle. This means help for all. All is a little bit large. It means that every person who needs help, independent of color, if women or men, or religionists, this doesn't matter. Hilfe was founded in 1971 by Adolf Pasta and his wife Martha Pasta in Austria and in 1973 by Reverend Father Dr. Aaron Eku here in Nigeria. The first common project was a teaching farm. A lot of different projects followed. The money came and comes from the so-called little people by donations. No support by government or the church. When Adolf celebrated his 80th birthday in Vienna, I met Monsignor Dr. Emanuel Moetok. He spoke about vocational education here in Calabar. In November 2010, this was my first time that I went to Nigeria. I saw the buildings, I saw some old machines, and I saw the possibilities. The Archdiocese of Calipar supported and support us. Because every craftsman needs a minimum of knowledge in metalwork to prepare his tools. I for Austria concluded to install vocational education at first in metalwork. Other branches should follow. The first step was to install some machines by the lathers, you can see it in the workshop, and I found two young men, Gerald Beranek and Thomas Conrad, for the first seminar three years ago. They cannot come a second time because the one got a topic disease and the other his third child and his wife says no, no more Nigeria. In fall of 2015, I met Johann Schiel, you see him here. And he's a very experienced master in metal sheet work. And he organized money, a lot of tools and materials, and came last year with his friend Thomas Stulig. This experience was so good that he organized a second transport. This time, is Mr. Harald Weikert with him, and they tell you something about the work now. Thank you for your attention. And now I will introduce you this presentation he did for you. And I try to talk a little bit to each picture, to each foliage, and I, I try to say a few words to it, yes? So here the first is a very great welcome. This is a project in Nigeria teach with a name called Teach the Teacher. We show something about our impressions of living here, about our experiences, and about the reached objectives from last year. Yes? So, Professor Uwe told you what is HIFA and who is HIFA. This is the founder and honor President Abel Pasha, he founded the HIFA. This is our um, current president, Professor Kraus, and the vice president and manager is Ulrike Meyer. He is in Vienna and is managing HIFA. So, now Project Calabar.
All we did in the, la in the, in the past started with one email written by Mr. Uwe to our school. Mr. Uwe wrote a school and invited teachers to take part in, in this project. And the first who was very interested was Mr. Chong. And then he started a fund raising campaign in the school. He started a fund raising campaign in the school and with the money we bought a machine for him. So we are grateful and thankful to all students in Austria, to all teachers and especially also to all companies who gave us money and machines and tools and so on. We are very grateful and this can you see on this on this sheet. So we bought for for the amount of 900,000 Naira machines, tools and goods for bringing to you. For the amount of 900,000 Naira, this was the result of the fundraising campaign. So you can see here any machines and any tools in the next pictures. The machines and tools were loaded and brought to the airport. And here you can see Europe. In the middle of Europe is Austria. Here is Austria, Italy, France, Spain, Algiers, Tunis. Yes, here is the north of Africa, the Mediterranean Sea, and in the north of Italy and in the north of Croatia, here is Austria. We are living here, near the, near the boundary to Czech Republic and Slovakian Republic. Austria, a small country with a large history, is divided into nine federal states. Our federal state is Lower Austria, with the capital St. Pölten. And this is Lower Austria, our federal state. And this federal state is also divided in 21 districts. You understand? And our district is in the northeast, Mistelbach. Mistelbach is our district. Here is the border to Czech Republic, here is the border to Slovakia. And this is the capital city of this district. This is Mistelpa. You can see. This is from. There? This is yeah. You can see Mistelpa from 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 uh, sky. This is the hospital of Mistelpa. There are nearly 10,000, 10,500 inhabitants in Mistelpa. And this is the vocational school where Master John is teaching. This is the school, a very new school, um, built five years ago. And these are the workshops. Yes? One workshop beside the other. A very great all workshop. This is where I come from. This is Feitenstein in Lower Austria, near the Czech border. And this is my village. So if I am looking out of my window in the living room, I can see this view. This is the castle of Falkenstein. It is 1,000 years old. This is the church, school, and the village. Here you can see wine glass. We have many wineries and many winemakers in Falkenstein. It's very interesting. So this is the team from the last year. Professor Uwe. Master Thomas and the beloved Master John. <laughs> so, last year on the 13th of April, they started on the airport Vienna.
Let's start it from the airport bay map. Here is a small window. You see the flight to Paris. The flight to Calapa was via Paris and via Lagos. So they arrived on Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris, the greatest airport in France. Airport Charles de Gaulle. And then they go on, they went on from France to Nigeria, from France to Laos. From here, in this direction. The airline was Air Force. This is Lagos. Mr. Thomas, or yes, Mr. Thomas took this photo, and here the first sign, car sign. Lagos is the center of the excellence. You know. Checking. All checking up. Checking out in Lagos, Mr. Uwe, Thomas Stulik, Mr. Thomas, waiting for the flight, now waiting for a for, uh, tuking by Mr. Paul. And this is the command in Lagos, where they spent one night, because the flight from Lagos to Calapa was still on the next day. They had to stay one, one night in, in command in Lagos. This is dinner. A few out of the window from the command, from the room in the command, to the church on the opposite side. Church in Lagos, a mess. So and now the flight from Lagos to Alba. It, it has already been very exciting for Thomas and, and for, for Mr. John, and also this year for me. This was very exciting. So, and this is the flight to Calabar. Here is Calabar. You know where it is. I think so. The landing in Calabar. And they were greeted by rain. You can see. This is airport Calabar. And then <coughs> Father Dominic waiting for them and brought Mr. Uwe, Mr. John and Mr. Thomas to the SPC, to the college. Here is Nina at the restaurant with Agnes. You know these pictures, and now the first they did was a walk around the SPC. They did a walk around the SPC to explore all and to see all the rooms and the buildings. And now you see photos from their first walk around. These are the rooms where we are sleeping, where they slept. One, two, three. Which rooms are here? Pets. Our pets.
ensure that in all the world, let us partner together, let us collaborate. During the interaction, we will not be able to work. We will, I will be scared to come to you because I'm not sure whether you will accept me. But if we work together, hand in gloves together, it will be easy to lift a very heavy level and it will be easy to move on a very rocky journey and it will also be able easy for us to achieve our goal. For this reason, I say thank you to all of you, all of this, and then now it's question time. We will take the next step for you all. My name, you is, my name is Patrick Anthony Francis. I stay in a building development authority. Please, uh, my question is from the, the projects that we are doing now, 2017 projects. And from what he was saying, the blogger was saying, he said they are going to use the material that we have now to construct the gutter round here. From what Which has been constructed already. Yes, from the picture. Mm -hmm. Now, and we know the material here is like, it's a metal. Mm -hmm. And from the little knowledge we have, the exposure of the metal to A, and water causes rust, have it? And we know this is the this is the kind of solvent that attacks. Okay, okay, please. So Thank my you. question now is, how how would the the how will the, these materials be able yeah, to stand in the face of heat and, and rain? Yeah. Okay, what we are using now, what we call in Nigeria galvanized uh, galvanized steel or galvanized pipe. Rust does not penetrate galvanized. To say that a metal is galvanized means that that metal has the capacity or tenacity to resist rust, resist heat of rain or sun, and then the water pouring. I think Mr. Harald will ask. Yes. It can be that it starts roasting. So after years, you must you must give a, a, a cover, a sheltering cover okay. on it, yes? Inside. Okay. Inside. So inside the gutter. You must give it that inside the, the, the bucket. Yes? So no. after, I think after five, six years, yeah. after five, six years, uh, you should do it. You should shelter it uh, for roasting. That is for after a period of five years. And there are very, very special and very expensive um, 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 uh, connections to do. And it is very expensive, but you can do it. So aluminium is, is not roasting. There are water doesn't matter. In this way, you have to do it in a few years. So this is continuous maintenance. But we can use aluminium, which according to Mr. Hara, is uh, more expensive. And then it can stand uh, for a test of time. Thank you. I greet you all. I am the competitor SPC. Palawa. Your name, please. please. Your name. Okay, you know, right, eh? yeah. Listen, I want to ask. I know very well in engineering, before you can produce anything, it comes with a sketch. Now, due to sketch, do you have any way you can design this using computer in this training, or are we doing it? Manually, the sketch of whatever I want to do. So the pictures. Good. You see them drawing. There is no aspect of engineering work. That, well, for the roadside engineers, it's possible that they can have the mental picture and start working. But the best design you have, you will find with the engineers. And uh, sometimes we confuse engineering and limit it to just those who are into mechanical, electrical, electronics, metal. Engineering is larger than that because the man who draws a building, an architect, is an engineer. The man who sets up the structure which you build and at the end of the day makes the roof with wood is also an engineer. Anyone who can imbibe technology and then puts it to use is an engineer so to your question now now they do a lot of drawing in the workshop before all these things are put down they draw they measure the parameter the dimension and 
come up from the drawing, they lift the drawing into what they want to get. But for now, there are a number of computers there, the software is there, but at the moment, we, they have not taught those we are training the use of these computers for design. But if you are a design engineer, we welcome you because that's why we are here. I want you to know that we have a number of books also donated by them that are there. I want you to explain to us how we can combine our normal required academic activity in the classroom with this technical skill acquisition. How can we combine it so that we go with the two? Thank you, Mom. From the very day of inception, some of you were in junior class. How do you benefit from this program? I need an answer. Because I said that over and over, and if you check your timetable at the moment, you should give Mom Signal that answer. And someone in senior class of us, how many? Okay. And Patrick, the last period for science students, those who have particular interest to be there. Well, that last period is left free, so I have asked the principal to slot in this, for not only for metal and uh, mechanical works, but for different uh, versatile, different kinds of uh, learning. For those who want to go into the paint production, the soap production, the, the soap production yeah, the candle, and then those who want engineering, the electrical, electronics, the metal and mechanics. So it's open. But I'm praying that the tendency of students who always want the last minute to run home and eat should not capture them. While I was in the seminary, most of the things I brought in here as principal, I learned them in the seminary. And I was having a full-time program of the seminary, which is regimented and strict. But I still cut out time to learn this, because I always thought, when I become a priest, what other thing will I do? Assuming I'm sent to a village, where the people don't have anything except maybe planting and harvesting. Can I teach them another thing for livelihood? Can I also make them understand Christ much more than celebration of the Mass, teaching of Catechism? Can I make them be more useful to themselves? If I meet young people who do not have something doing, what other thing can we help them learn so that they will not remain idle and they will not develop tendency of restiveness or become problematic? Can they have something that to learn is at that point a student? So if Monsignor comes to learn, Monsignor is a student. Are we together? But then to make to make it very clearly, understanding your question, Monsignor coming to learn is a special student. And so this pro program and project is open to all in the society. Whether you are a working class, you are without job, those we call jambites, waiting to go to university, or you are a student in secondary school, or you are not working, you are into your uh, private business, or you are already doing a roadside engineering work, either as a welder, a metal worker, or any of such sort, or you are just interested in learning something new. This program is open, and may I add also that this program, since its inception, is free. Thanks to Monsigno Steel, who encouraged the Archdiocese to leave it free, so as to attract people to come. The 65 so far trained have not just been students, of course, of those we have awarded certificate, none is a student of St. Patrick's College, except those who are outgoing students, but more than 50 are people from the society. Presently, those ongoing in the training, four are people from the society, not necessarily students. So that is not students of secondary school or within any confined system. But because they are coming to learn, they are students. Thank you.
motivation per se for the ritual contribution. I remember when I was working on a monsignor body as a provincial senior. He used to make a statement that said that no knowledge is the worst. And when Jesus was watching the feet of the disciples, he told them, what I'm doing now, you do not understand. In the future, you understand. And we have a little problem with water in the church. But this little training is very great, so they lose little. Very great. Right now, I'm planning with um, one of the students here to go and prepare and put that to put the best because what the people put there has been you know, causing some leakages. They did a very long work. So, with this knowledge now, be able to assist the church in a little way. And even as you remember in my journey school, in our sewing center in Bhutan Secondary School, when the sewing machine had problem, I used to repay from the little knowledge my father showed me. He said, what I'm doing to you now, you will not understand, but in the future you will understand. So I encourage you students, even some of you may be aspiring to become politicians, I am telling you in the future, politics will be very tough. Go into the technical knowledge. The money that people are thinking that is in politics may disappear because change is going to cost them. But if you learn it tomorrow, it will be of us. But I want to say, I'll be calling him more signal. So I want to ask one of the students, what is my name? But that they may tell me that they know. What is my name? I don't want to hear you. My name is Monsignor. Okay. Any other person? Very clear for him. Thank you, Father Dominic, for this opportunity. In fact, uh, I sent a text to him. He said, please, at your convenience, call my number. That was yesterday. And he did. He called. Because sometimes I want to tell him, yes, I phone, so I will not pick. Phone, phone, but I say it's busy. But the best thing for me, I have learned, is to send a text. And so I even tell him at this time I will phone. He will be away waiting for you then. Or call me at the convenience. And I don't worry, busy. And you're sending down, you're phoning, ringing, ringing, ringing. He will ignore you. Say, when I have time. He is very busy doing something. He doesn't want to forget. But that is by the way. But what I want to say is that I thank Father Dominic and thank these my good friends from Austria. We came down that time, Hipa. I still Hipa. If I help for all, help for all, he'll fail for others. So I thank them very much. I appreciate them, their sacrifice. They forget about themselves. They want to help. They want to assist. They want to lift us up. They forget about something about their family, about even the... the, 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 the Coming here, the danger in fact. Coming to Africa, Africa, this area, talking about kidnapping and so on. Sometimes they say, Well, I'll be safe. When I stay with kidnappers, I, I will tell them, Don't worry, God is with you. And they have been coming. And I want to thank them sincerely. And also, to send my special greeting to the pioneer person. My pioneer person is Chief Adolphus. Adolphus, what is it? And he's the person that started all this is only in Nigeria. And his dear daughter, Ulrike, well, remain very grateful and indebted to them about this HIFA program. What is the right now? Because they don't only, they started nevertheless in Enugu. They may not go into long history because Father Domini has something else, and I also maybe have something else. But he started with Enugu with one. Let Father Aaron. What they were doing, they were sending relief together to Nigerians at that time during the war. But after the war, he came in and said, What else has Father Aaron has told us here? After this, what can, next can you do? So they started, they were giving even scholarship to children, secondary and primary. After that, they started building workshops. He found many wood workshops, iron workshops, and even hospitals. And so on, they assisted in many places. So we thank them sincerely. And then they did something, I think, called it, but it's on the other places. 
I said our eyes is jealous. Human beings naturally. So I said, what can we do for Calabar? I want them to come to Calabar. I propose this iron uh, business. They said they would do something. And then, thank God, our brother, who were came. And he came and saw, as Padroni mentioned, the old machines that were here. And he did something about it. Started. And then, after that, he sent us new ones. So we're very grateful to him. who was then the principal of this place. I have been, I want people to say, Simon, Simon, I was disturbing him every time as I said here, yeah, that we should do something here. We got permission from the Archbishop Emeritus to rename this place Hifa Center, even though it is in next person. It's in writing. In the Emeritus Archbishop granted that permission. So, I mentioned to the new incumbent bishop that this is the first center. It's not St. Patrick's center. So then, when we came, we started things that Faroni has mentioned. But let me not so much get into the history. Faroni has told this. I want to continue from where he stopped. Where he stopped was things you call do it yourself. Not everything you call carpenter. Not everything you call bricklayer. Not everything you call this and that. There are things you should learn and do it yourself, even in your house. Even repairs of fridge, repairs of one thing or the other, you should read and learn. By now we can browse internet and see very many information. In that, this do it yourself as have many people on the ground that, as Brian Fairman said, I know of three boys. He's a student, he can lay blocks, bricks. I know he that he uses that to pay his school fee. I know a student who is a plumber. He uses that work to pay his school fee. I know another person who is a carpenter, make materials. The, the students, I know another one that is a, a, a generator repairer. He will take work and then during time, free time, he will go and repair. He uses that to buy whatever he wants. He uses that to buy his laptop. He's a student. But he's doing all those things. They still don't stop him from going out, as his father has said here, at your spare time, at the convenience. You go and do those things. It would help you. It will even, even can, sometimes you can take into that. And for example, I have a painter now. A painter is uh, going to how to wash the, not only the wall, the roof, and paint the roof and the iron there, spray. I was the person that did the garment center for uh, Ajade, and he, was, he studied physics. And I interacted with him, and I knew that he's very good in math, he studied physics, because we were discussing calculus. We were discussing uh, further math with him. He was able to make a, he was telling me so many things. He gave me the names of all the lecturers in the university. But he's a painter now. And then, for example, the work we are paying him to paint the cathedral, we are paying him 500,000. Labor only. Labor, and he has a car. He has a boss, he has a car. But he studied physics in the university. Now, the that, that church cathedral, and when you call him, see, he's the person in charge of painting the cathedral. So, not only as a, that's why I had to ask the father only that question. As we combine our academic activities with these skill acquisitions, and uh, work, uh, skill, uh, skill and tech. It as your spare time, at your company. Someone who has interest. Anybody say where there is a will, there is a way. That's the end of the thing. Please buy a prayer. Well, I became a priest. Well, I am not. <laughs> That's for another time. I just want to refer to Harold, to John, to Uwe, who have come all the way from Austria. I want to ask you, how much money are they going to earn for coming here? If you know the answer, put up your hand. How much money are they going to get for coming here? Shout, very loud. They are not paid for it. They are not paid for it. That's for it.
that make any difference? And I'm talking about priesthood as well. When I came here, did I come to get a fortune? Yes or no? No. No. Some days, these days, I have to use candor to see by it. And that's how it was when I first came here in 1971 to this college. The first house I slept in in Nigeria was that house where I'm sleeping now. Okay, I want to say that. And that changes your heart somehow if you are working from a sense of doing something to make the world a better place. I know we can say that to make you holy, but I would put it to make, if your heart says, I want to make the world a better place, there's a good chance there's a lot of holiness already inside you. It's not how many prayers you know, but it's how kind you can be and how helpful you can be to other people. And what you do with your time as a priest, missionary priest, a diocesan priest, as long as you keep money out of it, you will do so many things for your people that you would not even think of doing if you were only interested in what can give you a return, a financial return. Somehow money can cloud our vision. I was here teaching in this college for six years. I was quite limited in my <coughs> teaching. I was teaching physics for a little while and then maths all the time and religion to class, J, what's now JS2. We used to do the WASP then, it's only a five year course. Then I went to the junior seminary in Infamousing and I stayed there for 18 years and I was teaching maths and physics. That was in the classroom. And then I was also the principal or the rector of the seminary. And I was teaching boys how to do wiring of houses. And they learned. I was teaching boys how to care for the generators. And they learned. And I was teaching boys the plumbing of how to fix the water pipes. What was I doing? I was making sure we bought the tools that we needed. And whatever little knowledge I have, I gave it to them. Every year that I was in pharmacy, there were four students at any one time that were called engineers. And why were they called engineers? I mean, none of them had gone to university. They were the ones who, after they got to class four, they went into class five, and they ceased to be active engineers, although still there as advisors. So from class two, three, four, and the beginning of class five, then when the exams were getting close, they had to drop. And a class one boy would take off at the end of class one. That's the four engineers we had. And they learned everything that could be learned for people of that age about how to maintain a generator, even to change the oil, to check for the water, how to turn it on, how to turn it off, when not to turn it off. And they were the ones I taught how to do all the lighting, the wiring in the seminar. There's nothing to do with being a priest, is it? I mean, I'm supposed to teach you how to say Regina Chile, isn't it? But it's not. It's much, much more than that. So what Uwe and John and Harold are doing for us is sharing their own talents and sharing it with others to make this particular place a better place. I did it in promising what I had to do mainly out of necessity because it was too far away to be calling mechanics from Calabar to come the 25 miles to the seminary. And we had to do it ourselves, and we did it. And it was an enjoyable experience.
maybe not as enjoyable as the football field, but it was enjoyable. And the football field was also enjoyable. But I was teaching in St. Patrick's when I was here. I was the games master, teaching football all right, although I had people helping me, and then teaching athletics. The field that is now your main football field was the athletics track. So, and we had a good athletics team, and we had a good football team. But anyway, we, we carried on that into Empamacing, but Empamacing never became good at athletics because there were no competitions to take part in. That's a little bit of my own story, but I really want to emphasize and thank the three brothers who have come from Austria to emphasize the point that we need to emphasize to ourselves, we as priests, that we become priests not with regard to the financial return. And John Lee was a good example of that. Mama, we want to learn from it. Look at his lifestyle. And you know, you can do much more for people when money isn't there. You just reach out from your heart, you give up your time, you give up your talents, you do what you can do, and then you say, God, it's all in your hands. And everything is in his hands too. And God brought these three men to us this year. And hopefully they'll be coming for some years to come. So thank you, Father Dominic, for allowing me to say those few words. Not my vocation story, but that's there somewhere else. <laughs> Which is one big hammer he has played. I'm not sure I can emphasize that. But before we go, I need to check that. As a participant, you are no longer this one. is not the your officiate. You are here. Indeed, uh, President, I'm very happy to have been uh, participating in what was going on, even though I came a bit late. But I uh, observed that uh, this type of uh, exercise does not only tell us to hear, it allows us to see, glow what we see as images. As, you see, it helps us to remember more and inspires us to do the same thing. To go that far in terms of skill acquisition. And as I asked the children, the most of them are students, how would they combine academic work with skill acquisition? That can be done. As I mentioned to them, some do one thing or the other, like repairing of machines, a computer, even mason, and so on, even to pay their school fees. So one can do what I've done here, it's very useful and very important to anybody that's interested. Thank you very much, Mr. Okay. Camera. So tell us your name, your class, and what you learned from the seminar. My name is Augusto Mario. From a student of St. Patrick College. The, the program that, was, that, just, that just happened now is a very beneficial program. I've learned that we Despite our academic work, we can, put, we can make use of our hands to do various things that, are, that can be useful to us. We can also make money from it and also try to help others through it by teaching them. I thank the, the organizers of the, of the program thank them for coming to this school and choosing this school out of others to come to this school. Thank you very much. Okay, I've been from this seminar, or it's an education from the, from the high five from Austria. I've learned many things because I'm already in our school. I'm already in the parts of the orientation already. So I've learned many things. I want to produce many things like soap, um, many metal, gutters, or roots. And it has helped us in various forms. Also, I've been able to present the most of our, our young ones as asking in this aspect. I, I, and I want to thank the high five for, for choosing our school at the center and to thank our um, our archbishop and the and our school and our country school board for, for helping to sponsor all this this um, organization in our school. Thank you very much. My name is Ibez Marco Anthony Udoka. I am a student at St. Patrick's College, precise versus studio. Well there are so many things I've learned from what just happened now. Ranging from the morals, 
the praise inculcated on us, which is we don't do anything because of money. I also thank the three brothers who have made it here today to teach us on skill acquisition, ranging from metal works to plastic making. I'm going to say that it's really a blessing having out of the whole world chosen St. Patrick's College as a center. It is also a blessing being part of it because there are so many people out there who do not know that this is holding in St. Patrick's College. I thank the HIPA group who have made it possible to inculcate all these morals on us. Thank you. So yes, hello, my name is Harald Reichert. I'm from Austria, from Lower Austria, and I'm a teacher at the vocational school. And yes, I was asked why we are teaching here. This is a project um, by HIFA. This is the organization Hilfe für alle, Help for All, an Austrian uh, organization. And we were invited by this organization to start this project here in Kalaba uh, in cooperation with HIFA and St. Patrick's College and so we started to prepare this uh, project, teach the teacher and it started last year in April and this year is the second time, the second time we, we are here and we go on teaching here students and teachers. Would you say that um, the program has been a success? Would you say you have, you are sure you have impacted to the students? Would you say you are okay with what you have seen? Yes, uh, we are very happy what we have seen this year when we came. Um, there is much was going on uh, during the year and we are professionals and we can say uh, uh, here uh, will be worked very well with a very good quality and so it makes sense for us to come uh, again and to go on working here. So when we leave now, we do you want to come back to Calabar again? Yes, when we leave, um, we, we intend to come back and we hope uh, uh, it is possible. So we also must uh, plan and arrange it with our, with our school, with our headmasters and with HIFA. But we intend to come back, yes? Okay. We enjoy it very much here to, to work and to teach your students and your teachers. Do you have any challenge so far in your stay in Calabar? Do you have any challenge? Do you have any problem so far in your stay in Calabar? No, there are, there are no, no problems for us. Uh, we, are, we are very, very good cared and, and Father Dominic is... is uh, always near us and so if there would be any problem we tell him and I think we can solve it. Thank you very much. I'm our special team and this is our Tinsmith, yes. the profi as a Tinsmith and he has many many years of experience in Tinsmithing and in teaching students. He is called he is called the beloved Mr. John. It's called the beloved Mr. John. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm delighted also to have this interaction with uh, the CRBC. I want to say um, the three men who came to present the uh, part of the workshop and also educate us in uh, entrepreneurial education are from Austria. Professor Wekros and Mr. Harald uh, Snitcher and Mr. John Shear. They have been friends over time. They belong to the FIFA Austria non governmental organization. And over the years, for precisely five years now, they've been coming to Cross River State and Calabar precisely to partner with the Catholic Archdiocese of Calabar to see how they can bring this program which is a continuous thing in Austria so that cross Rivarians will be of help. The HIFA Austria, the word HIFA is an abbreviation which means help for all. 
started many years back in the 60s, but uh, the first center was established in 1971 in Enugu, here in Nigeria, for Nigerian people to learn uh, technology and how to apply skills in producing what they need. And so in Nigeria, we have nine centers, but in Coast River State, we have only one center. The choice of St. Patrick is number one because of the location. Number two, it is a school environment. Number three, it is one of our Catholic schools. And since the Catholic Archdiocese of Calabar partners with this uh, non-governmental organization in uh, Austria, it was wise and cost-effective to bring the center to St. Patrick's College. Apart from that, St. Patrick has a name, and um, far back in the 60s, before government took over this college, engineering was part of uh, one of the uh, activities and was also a curricular in the uh, part of the curriculum. And so we are only trying to bring back what was. And in these days, within the educational system in Nigeria, where we are encouraged to go back uh, to making use of our hands, it is even more wholesome to locate this skill acquisition and entrepreneurial center within a school so that the students may learn and also may be helped. It makes a lot of difference seeing the professors and the teachers from the foreign country coming in here to also interact with our teachers and the students. At the moment, they are handling the metal, the mechanical, and the electrical electronic works with students, not only students of St. Patrick's College or students of Catholic schools, but students across schools in Cross River State. And above all, it is not only open to secondary school students who are primarily or basically science and technology students, but it is open to all in the society who are willing to learn. Those who are doing roadside ele uh, uh, ele uh, electrical work, those who are doing roadside um, fabrication, and those also who undertake metal work, welding. It is also an opportunity to retrain them. And so we are glad to have this there and also to have them around. Thank you.